This couple had to terminate two pregnancies when scans revealed severe deformities. Now they're pregnant again and terrified. There's a little bit of me that um, still thinks because because she hasn't been born yet, it's it's not you know it's it's not over. Doctors were baffled as to why this couple had suffered seven miscarriages. That's the most painful, um, heart wrenching thing to go through, isn't it? Mm. Could natural medicine hold the answer? It's not all about Mark, really. I know, but no, it'd be nice though. Mark was just 17 and Kerry 28 when the couple first met. Because of the age gap, many said their relationship wouldn't last. But six years on, they're not only still together, they've suffered more heartache than most couples go through in a lifetime. You're going to go really fast. After nearly two years together, Mark and Kerry had a healthy baby boy, Joseph, who's now three. When Joseph was just five months old, the couple were ecstatic when Kerry fell pregnant again. But their perfect world was about to be shattered. She didn't say much when, when she was looking at the, the baby. Um, I don't think she said anything when she was looking. She sort at the of baby. had a look and then said, um, "Okay, just hold on a second. Or yeah, and she went. She went out of the room to get somebody, and that was that was a bit scary. She came back with a consultant who studied the scan, and then broke the devastating news that their baby had spina bifida. It was very clear the way she pointed out. First of all, she looked at the at the spine. You could see there was um, almost a football shape. Um, just a big circle in the middle of the spine where she described how it should intertwine all the way around to the top. Basically at that time it was pointed out to us that it, it wasn't like a you know a mild case it was it was quite severe I'm not sure if I even remember her saying it's it, it's as severe as she's seen it. Kerry and Mark faced the agonizing decision whether to continue the pregnancy. They'd been told the baby could be severely deformed with a poor quality of life. For the sake of the baby and their son Joseph, they decided to terminate the pregnancy. How on earth could we take away two parents from, you know, this this little being who was only about nine, ten months old at that point? And take away everything he's ever known to devote to, to another child who, from the information we were given, just on the, based on the evidence of the scan, may never walk, talk, anything. And what colour is it? And yellow. And yellow, yeah. Got white and yellow. Hmm? Because the fetus had reached 19 weeks, Kerry had to give birth to a stillborn. Bizarrely, they brought it through in a, in a cradle, um, wrapped up in a blanket. I asked if I could hold him, and then I ended up holding him. And you know, I want to give him a name. I want to, I wanted to hold him. I wanted to do the service and things because we couldn't do anything else for them. Despite the pain, Kerry and Mark longed for another child. Just six months later, Kerry fell pregnant again and with only a 5% chance of the same thing happening. The couple were not overly anxious. But at their 11-week scan, it was obvious from the sonographer's face that something was wrong. As soon as her tone changed, I instantly knew it was something awful. And I thought, you know, how, how can it be the same thing again? You know, but it, it, it wasn't, it was worse. The baby had anencephaly, a very serious neural tube defect, affecting the development of the skull and the brain. It's sometimes so disturbed that you don't have hemispheres. And because you don't have that part of, of brain, uh, face looks 
sometimes quite strange with kind of frog eyes. It's little, it's little, it's no surviving. This time, the couple wouldn't have to decide whether to keep the baby. The choice was made for them, as the baby would never survive outside the womb. As Carrie was only 11 weeks pregnant, the fetus was removed surgically. I'd convinced myself that everything was going to be all right, and that's, I think, how I dealt with everything. Is that I just, you know, nothing's going to be wrong, nothing's going to be wrong, because if I just, I think if I'd thought, yeah, something's going to be wrong, then I would have just cried all the way up to, you know, to it happening. So I, I, I was a lot more, um, I think, emotionally uh, gutted the second time round. But Kerry and Mark weren't prepared to give up just yet, and doctors were about to suggest a possible solution. Lisa and Chris nash Rafael would face a five-year struggle to get their child. Lisa was 33 when they first started trying for a baby. Her first pregnancy ended in an early miscarriage. Obviously, I was disappointed and in a little bit of shock. Quite upset, but, but obviously still hopeful. A lot of women do have a miscarriage and, and go on to have healthy children quite soon afterwards. I had a week off work and I was given a leaflet explaining how I would be feeling and basically that's it. The next miscarriage I had, I started to think, oh, this, this isn't fair, I've had two now, what's going on, you know, and you start to get quite upset. And again, we went to the hospital, very sorry, here's your leaflet. It's really hard. When Lisa suffered a third miscarriage, they became concerned that something was seriously wrong. The couple were referred to a recurrent miscarriage clinic, but doctors were flummoxed as all the tests came back normal. But then over a period of 21 months, Lisa went on to suffer a further four miscarriages. It seems the most natural thing in the world for, for everybody else around you. And, and you're there struggling, trying to climb a mountain almost. It's that moment where they mm. turn and tell you that, that there's not a heartbeat anymore. And it's, it, it, that's rough. That's the most painful, um, heart-wrenching thing to go through, isn't it? Mm. So. After seven miscarriages, the doctors still couldn't give the couple any answers. Medically, there was nothing obviously wrong with either of them. You know, you can accept you're unlucky when you do the lottery every Saturday night, but you know, when it comes to when it comes to trying for a family, just being told you're unlucky is 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 something that that you can't accept. By this time, Lisa and Chris were desperate and decided to look into natural health. They each sent off a sample of hair to an organisation called Foresight where the hair is analysed for levels of metals in the body. Both came back with abnormally high levels of lead in their systems. To see a broad background of raised heavy metals is not that unusual. But to see, um, in this case, lead dramatically higher than the others, you know, it was a real spur on the graph, as it were, um, it does provoke the question, where is this coming from? Could this be the key as to why Lisa had never managed to carry a pregnancy to full term. The results would be revealed within weeks. After two pregnancies ending in tragedy, Kerry and Mark were determined to get a healthy child. To lose one baby to spina bifida and another to anencephaly is unbelievably rare. Doctors became concerned the neural tube defects could be down to a genetic component but all the tests came back normal. The couple were given a 10% chance of a neural tube defect recurring, and Kerry was advised to take five milligrams of folic acid daily. That's 12 times the normal dose. They decided to have one final attempt at getting a healthy baby. If it all went wrong, this time they'd accept defeat. Just eight months later, Kerry suffered an early miscarriage. Because it was a miscarriage, 
um, and there was there was an absolutely no way, no proof of showing what was wrong and why it happened. Psychologically, I I didn't count that as the third strike and you're out. Go on then. Oh, he missed. Kerry is now 31 weeks pregnant. And even though a 20 week scan revealed the baby looks healthy, with no evidence of a neural tube defect, the couple are still terrified something could go wrong. More so with this pregnancy than any other, I've desperately tried not to get uh, emotionally connected um, before it actually shows up. There's just a tiny, tiny bit of me now that just thinks, is everything going to be okay? Will Kerry and Mark get the healthy baby they so desperately want? And Lisa and Chris finally solve the mystery of the miscarriages. In the last three years, Kerry and Mark Bentham have experienced nothing but tragedy. They've lost one baby to spina bifida and another to anencephaly. Now Kerry's 31 weeks pregnant, and this time the couple are hoping for a happier ending. <laughs> you cheeky monkey, that's enough. The chances of having another baby with a neural tube defect is between 10 and 12 percent, but with two weeks to go till the birth, Kerry's worried. Mum, do you want a bit? No, thank you. Uh, Mum, just pass me the bit. I do tend to think about everything that's happened over the last three years, but I, I try not to because I don't, I don't want to worry myself and, and, and stress myself out. There's a little bit of me that um, still thinks because she hasn't been born yet it's, it's not you know it's it's not over I think that's one of the things that's taught me is is not to get you know too attached to something until you've actually got it because you you can only end up being disappointed as so I think that's the way I feel Lisa and Chris fully understand the heartbreak of losing a baby after seven recurrent miscarriages the medical profession were baffled as to why Lisa couldn't carry a baby to full term. But amazingly, it looked like Lisa and Chris may have stumbled across the answer themselves. After sending strands of hair off to be analysed, the result revealed unusually high levels of lead. The company Foresight wrote to them, asking if they had lead pipes or were restoring an old Victorian house. The answer was no but they did have an unusual hobby. And we said, well, the one thing nobody's asked us is that in our spare time, we make and repair stained glass windows. There are some very basic precautions that you should take with lead, and, and we took those precautions. We weren't careless, but we still managed to absorb the lead. Looking at the uh, part-time career they'd got, of repairing leaded windows. Um, we didn't need to look an awful lot further as to understand where the lead was coming from. And of course, where there were soldering joints and you know, probably breathing some of the dust when they were cutting and so forth. This was all being absorbed into the system. It's not so surprising that um, when you've got a potential mother handling lead and it's loading up the system, that there would be recurrent miscarriages. Drastic action had to be taken. Wearing chemical suits, Lisa and Chris 
cleaned the workshop from top to bottom to remove any remnants of the lead. The couple were advised by their nutritionist to follow a detox diet to remove the excess lead from their bodies. We needed several vitamin and mineral tablets morning and night, chelated calcium being one of them, which acts as a minesweeper to pull all the, the lead from your, your bones and your teeth and the places in the body where the lead is parked because the body essentially doesn't know how to deal with it. And it's a very scientific, straightforward, logical, but simple solution to something. And we were sitting there thinking, why didn't we do this five years ago? After three months on the detox diet, they had their hair analysed again, and unbelievably the lead had dropped back to practically normal levels. Their nutritionist put them both on a special preconception diet. Within six months, Lisa had fallen pregnant again. Could the diet make the difference? Would she get to full term this time? Kerry and Mark's baby is on its way. Kerry is eight days overdue and went into labour at four o'clock this morning. Her waters broke on the way to the hospital. Kerry's been in labour for five and a half hours. She's had an epidural and is ready to put. <laughs> it's all right. Save your energy. Try not to be too scared. Yeah, it's all right. Well done, Kerry. <laughs> well done. Go on, Kerry, you're doing great. Brilliant! Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Almost there. Okay. Almost there. Oh, it really is. Okay. It's absolutely it's fine. Baby's head's I know. Oh, it's not. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Fine. You're doing brilliantly. Kerry and Mark know their baby is almost here, but they've always got the worry at the back of their mind that something could go wrong. It's just because her head's stretching the skin. Okay. The minute it's half in and half out, that's why. But you're so uh, close. Uh, oh, you did so well. I can't. Oh, 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 just, 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 just have just have a rest a minute. It's okay. The head is crowning, but Kerry's exhausted, and the epidural is wearing off. It's a tense moment as Dad nervously waits to see if the baby is healthy. It's a baby girl, but she's blue and will need some oxygen. She's just a little bit shocked by yeah. the whole thing. Congratulations. Well Thank you. Oh. <laughs> baby Bethany weighs eight pounds, six ounces, and is perfectly formed. An emotional dad bonds with his daughter, while the midwives okay, tend to mum. Yeah. Oh. Okay. 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 A bit bright. It's been a long and painful journey, but at long last, it's over. I'm so pleased that you look absolutely fine, honey. She's just in in one piece and happy and healthy and absolutely massive. Well, I can't explain it. It's... I mean, it just is what it is, really. Just, just relieved that it's over now. Because you were... Uh... You were hanging in for dear life, weren't you, honey? Hey. Kerry and Mark got their baby thanks to the medical profession, but Lisa and Chris had to turn to natural methods to get theirs. Is that tickling your feet? Is it tickling your feet? After five long years, by which time Lisa was now 38, baby Clemmy was born in June 2005. 
the couple could never have known that their seemingly harmless hobby could be the cause of lead poisoning, leading to seven miscarriages. We've stopped doing the lead for the time being. Not to say that we won't go back to it again, but if we do go back to it, I don't think I'd let my children go into it. No, that's not daddy. That's not daddy, is it? I just felt fantastic. I felt like, at last, I've managed to do it. There's an element of, of almost disbelief at the time as mm. well. It's like, oh my God, we've, <laughs> we've, we've done it. We've got there. And who knows? Maybe a brother or sister, but I can hardly dare say that. <laughs> Back at home, Kerry and Mark can finally put the tragedies of the last three years behind them now that they've got their healthy baby girl, Bethany. I think when they held her up and whisked her off, that was the point, just as they lifted her up there, that I just thought, wow, that's it now. I've got two, just four of us two baby seats in the car and yeah four of us now it was really it was really weird it was that that moment i think that i just thought thank goodness for that were you trying to go yeah well, i remember being speechless i think if i had said anything then i would have just completely broke down it was just you know one of those situations where you get all that emotion there and you sort of you have to cover it up by not saying or doing anything their consultant, Mr. Lesney, says it was high doses of folic acid that made the difference. To have a healthy baby, Kerry had to take five milligrams before conceiving and in the vital first three months of pregnancy. Say hello, Bethany. Hello, Bethany. It's traumatic first time. And second time, you just can't believe that it could happen to the same couple. It's amazing, but we have to remember we've got something to beat it. Luckily, we have reasonably good diet, but for some people it's not enough. Kerry and Mark can hardly believe their nightmare is finally over. Well, I, I feel relief more than anything. It's, that it's, it, it's all over with now. I feel like we've got a stage of our life over with. We're gonna, we can now start moving on. It's just so nice thinking. You know, this is this is it, this is brilliant. She's you know, she's here and it's lovely.